The United States has been trying to pass health care reform for a hundred years, and it finally passed it in March 2010. Teddy Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, Harry Truman tried to pass health care reform. John Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, Richard Nixon, and finally Bill Clinton in 1993 all tried to pass comprehensive health care reform. It never succeeded. Finally, in March 2010, President Barack Obama managed to get through comprehensive health care reform through the Congress. How did it happen after all those years of failure? Well, first, President Obama was elected convincingly and overwhelmingly in November 2008. He garnered 365 electoral votes to John McCain's 173 electoral votes. While the free-falling economy and the Great Recession were the primary considerations in the election of 2008, health care reform is not far behind, in large part because many people were worried about becoming unemployed and therefore losing their health care coverage. They were also worried about the very high and growing health care costs. President Obama put in a very experienced health care team. Many of the people understood LBJ's lessons to overcome impediments to pass comprehensive and major legislation. They also had a lot of experience with the failure of President Clinton's health care reform. Many of them had worked in the Clinton White House. Remember Lyndon Johnson's mantra for passing legislation, speed, keeping the economists quiet, mastering the congressional process, giving Congress credit, go public and building momentum, and most of all, keeping passion sustained through the whole process. Speed was a very important mantra. While the initial requirements of the administration were to pass a stimulus bill to stimulate the economy and get it moving, everyone understood the importance of speed in getting health care reform through. Senator Max Baucus said early in the process that he anticipated passing a bill out of the Senate by June, late summer at the absolute latest. It was very important to keep the economists quiet. And to that end, the president had several requirements. First, the total health care reform bill had to be under $1 trillion for 10 years. Second, half the money had to come from cuts in programs and efficiencies and half the money had to come from new revenue. And probably most importantly, the bill had to be fiscally responsible. It could not add to the deficit. We had to cover the spending from cuts and new revenue. A third important item was to master the congressional process. Everyone understood that one of the things that sunk President Clinton's health care reform proposal is the fact that there were so many bills and supporters were fragmented un under different approaches. Unity among supporters was going to be crucial. While many people on the left of the Democratic Party wanted single payer or wanted a public option, everyone recognized that the worst failure would be no bill at all. And people were willing to compromise to get health care reform passed. In addition, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi understood the major challenges of getting a bill through the House, and she made several important decisions early on. It's important to recognize that in the House, three major committees have jurisdiction over health care, the most important being House Ways and Means Committee, but Education and Labor and Energy and Commerce are two other committees that have to hold hearings and pass the health care reform bill. In the process of appointing committee chairs, Nancy Pelosi sent a strong message. She relieved John Dingell, Democratic representative from Michigan and longtime senior Democrat on the Energy and Commerce Committee of his chairmanship of that committee and replaced them with Henry Waxman, who would be more effective in getting a bill through. That sent a loud message to all the Democrats. She also insisted that these House committees work together. There not be three separate bills, very different from each other, passed out of each committee. There had to be one tri-committee bill. This was extremely important. On the Senate side, there was also understanding that the Senate egos would have to be handled. 
Along the process, Senator Max Baucus, who is chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, the most important committee with jurisdiction over health care reform in the Senate, created a white paper in the fall of 2008, even before the new Congress came into session. That white paper about health care reform included everyone's ideas. It was longer than 100 pages, and everyone could see that some of their major concerns were included in his thoughts about how to reform the system. He also understood that there were key senators whose concerns had to be addressed. Senator Lieberman, independent of Connecticut, his opposition to the public option because of all the health insurance companies in his state would have to be handled. Similarly, Senator Ben Nelson, a relatively conservative Democrat from Nebraska, his concerns had to be addressed. Senator Baucus understood the importance of managing all those people. To keep the public support, it was recognized that we had to keep a lot of the existing healthcare infrastructure in place. Remember, 85% of Americans have coverage. About half of Americans have coverage through their employer. A lot have coverage through Medicare or Medicaid or the VA system. And it was not going to be possible to pass health care reform by upsetting all of those components. So reform had to work within the structures of the existing system to keep the public on board. One of the most important understandings of the Obama team was the necessity for neutralizing the opposition. What sunk many of the previous bills before were opposition from the AMA, the health insurance industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the device manufacturers. To begin to co-op them, neutralize their opposition, and get them to support the bill, the White House had a meeting on March 5, 2009, in the East Room with the AMA, the Chamber of Commerce, the insurance industry, the pharmaceutical and device manufacturers, to try to get them on board. That was the start of a process of negotiating with them. What did they need in the bill and what would they contribute to passage and to the revenue necessary for covering health care reform. It was a very important stroke of genius to make sure that these groups, which had traditionally sunk health care reform, were now on board. All through the process, we were reminded that speed was important. Phil Shalero, who was Director of Legislative Affairs at the White House and the key point person in negotiating with Congress, kept reminding everyone, let's just get health care reform passed through the House and Senate. Then we'll work out the details and the conflicts in conference. Don't make your favorite detail, he would tell us. Hold up passage, because if we don't get it passed, it will die. We just looked at some of the structural problems in trying to get a health care reform bill passed through Congress. The multiple committees, the need for speed. Next, we're going to look at particular challenges for the Affordable Care Act, the need for bipartisan support, and the difficulty of getting a vote both in the House and the Senate.